Hello and welcome. So similarly, this video is going to be more of an explanation video than a code with me video. But in the previous video in this series, I implemented depth buffering by sort of rendering all the triangles and then for every triangle doing an atomic min and carrying over the index of that triangle, then re-rendering all the triangles and checking whether each of those triangles was the best triangle for that fragment, if that makes sense. But that's missing a really elegant solution, which is the following. Let's say we have a 64-bit integer and the most significant 32 of those bits is holding the depth value. Then we can do comparisons and the lower 32 bits will not be used in the comparison. It's only the upper 32. But the lower 32 bits can hold whichever payload we want including color data. So what I'm doing in this version is I'm rendering all of the triangles. I'm storing the triangles depth in the upper 32 bits and I'm storing the RGBA in the lower 32 bits doing an atomic min and that carries over the correct colors. Now there's a little more to it than that. I'm using atomic image operations. So what that is, I guess if we go over to my compute shader to clear my screen. I have this image, which is my color buffer. The elements inside are unsigned 64 bit integers. And then if we go down to the bottom, I can do an atomic operation on them. Now, as you can see, there's a little bit more to this. Um, let me look at the bits here, right? So for one thing, I need to be sure to pack these bits correctly. That was most of the debugging here actually was working out how to pack all this stuff correctly. But um, for another thing, there's a bunch of extensions that I need. So I need the image 64 bit integer extension. And of course I need explicit arithmetic types in 64 in order to do this like uint 64 T stuff. Um, but I also need this um, memory scope semantics extension in order to do an atomic image store. Now, there are different ways of doing this. We could do an atomic image exchange, which just swaps out whatever is previously in the image at this position with the incoming integer. And that does not need these extra specifiers, but I wanted to do it above board. So I went atomic image store and uh, yeah, we need to specify the invocation semantics, uh, invocation storage and semantics for that operation, which yeah, I'm not going to touch on too much because it was just something that I had to bolt on there to get the thing to work. But yes, yeah, so this is what I do. I pack all those bits together. I put them in on the rasterizer side, whether it's a small triangle or a big triangle, it's pretty much the same method. What I do again is I just pack all this data together. Now, the interesting thing here is the target is um, yeah unsigned integers. And so what I'm doing is I'm scaling the color up by 255 just to make sure I get a number between zero and 255. Um, and then I'm doing an, at an atomic min and that is replacing the depth value if we're getting, if we're rendering a, a closer fragment. And also if we're rendering a closer fragment, it's replacing the color. But all this stuff is happening and the color buffer is being packed with this custom format, 64 bit integers, and the stuff is sort of interlaced in those last 32 bits. So what I then need to do once I've done everything is run over the whole color buffer and for every fragment, unpack the actual color values and write them into like a temporary surface, which is gonna get copied to the swap chain. And so that is happening in this right color compute shader. So yeah, we've got this uh, color buffer, then we've got this pretty standard image that we're writing to. And this was, I will not lie, this was a nightmare trying to work out how to get this to happen. You know how it is when you're dealing with floating point numbers, you can get some pretty random colors. But um, yeah, the basic idea is I mask off the individual components, shift down if I need to, then scale everything back, you know, dividing by 255 to get it back to the range zero to one. And then, yeah, put it in there. So um, this is what it looks like. I don't know, maybe this isn't super exciting. It looks the same as before, but we're not rendering the triangles twice. And 
as I always say, OBS is affecting the frame rate a little, quite a lot. But when I run this on my machine without OBS, this is making a significant difference to performance compared to what we were doing previously, rendering the triangles twice. So this is pretty cool. I mean, again, there are a few places we can go with this. Probably I'm going to have a look at the standard rendering stuff. So have a look at perspective projection and transformations, putting that stuff in. Then after that, I want to have a look at model rendering. So I, I want to really show what this stuff can do. Yeah, I'll just talk a little bit about how I initialize this because there are some extra requirements. So again, all the code is in the GitHub repo, but if we go into the device, there's a another feature here, this Vulkan physical device shader image atomic in 64 features. Oh my goodness, what a name. But this is the um, struct which instructs the Vulkan device to enable this feature. So the way we enable this is we create one of these structs and then we set the shader image in 64 atomics to true. And then we put that into our chain, our PNX chain. And yeah, that should be in there. And then in addition to that, there's a feature name that we need to enable this one here, extension name, sorry. And yeah, then fingers crossed everything should work. But yeah, code is in the repo. So I know this is a little, somehow a short video, but a long winded video at the same time. But yeah, exciting stuff is happening. I, I mean, I'm enjoying this. I know that I spent a long time debugging on these programs, but um, I really do think it's cool. But yeah, I will see you again soon. Bye. Hi everybody. I just want to give a massive shout out to my channel supporters on Patreon. If you like the content that I make and you would like to support the stuff that I do, all I ask is $2.50 a month. It really helps, even if it's literally just the motivation to sit down and make these videos because they do take time. So a really big thank you to Antonin Karet, Botvinka, Dankil Falls, Declan, Endelon Studios, Edania, Gary Duchenne, Sean Falsvilla, Lane Duhit, Mathieu Durick, and Moim. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And yeah, hope things are going well. And yeah, see you around. Bye.